also make sure that all the bills and our records were paid and, and kept uh, really detailed financial records for our consistory. And we never had any problems, right? <laughs> we were very instrumental in managing our uh, budgets every year. Uh, it, it could be a cumbersome task as well. Uh, she made sure that she worked also with Trinity to ensure that we pay like Hartford's bills and, and really did a lot of un, uh, to, unknown to me until I got involved <laughs> of just how many uh, details there are involved in being treasurer. So I only worked with Luann recently in my tenure right now, but I asked Kay Yoder to say a few words. Kay worked with Luann uh, for most of her, all of her tenure, I should say. So I'd like Kay to say a few words. I'm not going to tell you anymore what I'm going to say because you took some of Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs>
coming up, and it's a virtual walk, but we might have a group that does it sort of together on the 18th at the uh, Rail the Trail in Wadidisco. And um, so if you'd like to uh, collect for this, for the crosswalk, or if you'd like to walk, then it's easy because, you know, you can walk a mile here, a mile there, and, and there you've done it. So um, I have uh, a number of envelopes, so I invite you to walk the crosswalk this year. Are there any other announcements this morning? Yes. Yeah. If anyone took Raina orders, I have their boxes in my car. So after church, please come get them. We'll take this Morata uh, to get some of Debbie. Please join in the call to worship. The Lord guides a person in the way they should go. The Lord protects those who please him. If they fall, they will not stay down. I have never seen a good person abandoned by God. For the Lord loves what is right. He does not abandon his faithful people. Here's the good news. Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Well, today I want to tell you a few things about the Neighbors in Need offering, which is uh, next week. And it's our, one of our UCC 5 for 5 offerings. 
And a third of it every year goes to our Native American ministries through the Council of American Indian Ministries of the United Church of Christ. And there's 22 Native American congregations, and they're out in North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, and so on. And uh, I thought, well, what's it like to be part of a church out there? So I looked on the Dakota Association Facebook page, and I could see they had a mission meeting, I guess, for their association. And they had a big tent outside, and then they had some teepees out there. And, and in the tent, they showed the children's choir singing. So they have a children's choir uh, like we do. And then they had, um, uh, you could hear them singing a song, a hymn in Dakota language, and it was the tune of Sweet Hour of Prayer. So I imagine that was what they were singing. And then uh, there were um, horses you'd see. Sometimes they'd have in pictures. They'd be riding horses. And so I thought, well, this is kind of sounds like here, but a little different, and so we can be glad that we're brothers and sisters with those congregations out there, and uh, Donna, maybe we'll have to go visit, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make a little trip. It's not, not that long, huh? And, uh, and then the other thing I wanted to say about the um, Neighbors in Need offering is on the back of your bulletin insert today, it has a story about unleashing potential in uh, neighborhood houses in St. Louis. And Kevin and I, it's a UCC um, program for inner city kids. It's, um, they have after school and then in the summer they have a program. And, and Kevin and I, when we were in seminary, we worked there for a summer. And it was kind of challenging, you know, little kids, but um, it was rewarding and I'm glad they're still doing things. And you see that neighborhood Hood uh, Houses got a grant from the Neighbors in Need offering and they gave formula and diapers to uh, families that uh, couldn't get those easily. So we're, we're glad for the ways that we can help when we give to that Neighbors in Need. Uh, the scriptures today are from Psalm 25, verses 1 through 9. In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you, do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord, teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is you in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. A reading from Philippians 2, verses 1 through 13. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset of Jesus Christ, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God 
exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. The Gospel reading is in the bulletin. Matthew 21, verses 23 through 32. Jesus entered the temple courts, and while he was teaching, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things, they asked, and who gave you this authority? Jesus replied, I will ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, where did it come from? Was it from heaven or of human origin? They discussed it among themselves and said, if we say from heaven, he will ask, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the people, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we don't know. Then he said, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will so, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did, and even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. This is the good news. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Well, when I was a kid, I had chores to do. And one of them I shared with my brother. We took turns uh, cleaning the bathroom sink. And we had a lot of disagreements about whose turn it was to clean the sink. And I remember another time, a friend and I made apples with cinnamon and sugar, and we left the bowl of them in the playhouse and forgot about it for a month. And then, of course, they were fuzzy and, and white, and I'd never seen anything like it before. And uh, my oldest brother insisted I needed to throw it out. I made it. It's my fault. I had to get rid of it. And I insisted I didn't want to. You know, it was, it was too uh, icky. And I think I finally ended up doing that. But there are often jobs that nobody wants to do. But life is better when somebody does it. So think for a moment. Who takes out the trash at your house? And who cleans the toilet? And whoever it is, they're a very wonderful person. <laughs> and when there is someone in your household who just loves to wash dishes, you are very blessed. So, you know, we have chores at home, in work, at school, in every organization. There's work to do, and not everybody wants to do it. So how do we determine who is going to do the stuff that nobody wants to do? And how do we work together? Well, in the letter to the Philippians, Paul writes to the Christian church in Philippi, and he says, make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. And if you read behind between the lines, he's just saying, you know, get along. 
Come on, people, work together. Paul doesn't want the Philippians to give him headaches. You know, he's their founding father. So he's saying, make me happy. Work together so well, it's like you're one. One for all and all for one. In verse 3, he says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. But in humility, consider others better than yourselves. And I really don't like to hear that. You know, consider others better than yourselves. Because it seems like we should have some self-respect. But, you know, if you do consider others and their point of view, it makes it easier to resolve differences. I think Paul doesn't mean we have to be a doormat, but he's saying believe in the other person. If someone doesn't want to wash the dishes, say, hey, it's not like you to leave me with all the dishes. I know you're a kind and caring person. So you can help ask for help believing in the other person. Verse 5 says, Each of you should look not to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. And that sounds like a pretty good way to work out disagreements, to think about what everybody's interests are and work out something you can all live with. In life, we have those moments when we just, you know, love and care for the entire world. But then there are other moments, you know, we easily fall back into, you know, life is survival of the finish, and I have to look after myself because no one else cares. And it takes real effort to think and care about others for the long haul. So Paul gives his advice. Get along. Don't just think about yourself. And it's not just advice. He gives an attitude check. And he says, have the mindset of Christ Jesus. And then Paul puts in his letter a poem about Jesus. And the Bible at that point was just the Old Testament. Paul had written letters that eventually would be part of the New Testament, but there wasn't a New Testament yet. They weren't considered scriptures. But there is a poem that Paul has heard, and he thinks this is a great reminder for Christians about what we follow and who we follow. And the poem talks about Jesus, who he says, although he was in the nature of God, he didn't use that to his advantage. He didn't lord his authority and power over everybody else and expect them to do things like wash his feet. Instead, he made himself a human, a servant. He humbled himself, and he was obedient to God unto death, even suffering death on the cross. So this first half of the poem has Jesus. He starts in the nature of God. You know, he's really great. He puts that aside and comes into the world as a baby, a, a humble human. And then he goes even lower. You know, he suffers and dies on the cross. So Jesus was not upwardly mobile. In his life, he is going down and down and down. And he dies a despised man. Paul wants us to have the mindset of Christ, that attitude that we are here to serve. Verse 9 to 11 of the poem goes on. He says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave Jesus the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So Paul says, this is our Lord. This is who we worship. We worship uh, this guy, Jesus, who so loved the world, he gave up his life. And it's crazy for us to say, well, Jesus is Lord, and then live life like it's all about me. You know, we worship Jesus because he lived for all. He died for all, and he's Lord of all. So he was one person who was for all. And that's our God, you know, this humble person for others. And Jesus 
life shows us if you're for other people, there is a reward, right? There was a reward for Jesus. He became on the level with God. There's a reward for us when we are for others as well. You know, that's a, a different way of thinking. In the world, you might think you have to claw your way up the ladder of life. You have to push other people out of the way. But Jesus didn't do that. His mindset was humble. Thinking of others, he had time for the least of all. And he is Lord of all. So he shows us if you're, if you're for others, there is a reward. There's some researchers who took people and they put them in, in two different groups. In one group, they said, Here's a bunch of money. Go spend it on someone else. And the people did. And they told the other group, here's some money. Go spend it on yourself. And those people did that. And who was happier? The people who spent the money on someone else felt more positive. It actually feels pretty good to think about and be helpful to other people. And Jesus was humble, but he didn't have a poor opinion of himself. He didn't walk around saying, I'm no good, I'm nothing. No, he accepted himself and his good qualities. He also knew his limitations, like he needed rest and prayer and time with God. And he could see in others good qualities. He thought other people were valuable. He praised many people for their faith, he ate and drank with sinners. He made himself available to bless children. And when people tried to quiet blind Bartimaeus, Jesus said, Bartimaeus, come here, come on down. So Jesus could see the good in other people. And what does it mean to be humble like Jesus? Well, humble people recognize that although they have special accomplishments and abilities, they are just like everybody else. So they don't expect extra attention, extra interest, extra favors or special treatment from other people. And when you don't expect to receive special treatment, you're more ready to work together with other people. You don't insist that washing the sink is not your job or that you don't have to clean up after yourself. Well, uh, Vince Lombardi was one of the greatest football coaches ever. And when he was asked, what does it take to make a winning team? He said, there are a lot of coaches with good ball clubs who know the fundamentals and have plenty of discipline, but still don't win the game. And he said, if you're going to play together as a team, you've got to care for one another. You've got to love each other. Each player has to be thinking about the next guy and be saying to himself, if I don't block that man, Paul's going to get his legs broken. I have to do my job well in order that he can do his. And Lombardi said the difference between mediocrity and greatness is the feeling these guys have for each other. So the Apostle Paul knew that the church in Philippi needed to succeed. If they wanted that, they had to be thinking about the guy next to them, the other people in the church. They have to feel for each other. You know, they need, he's talking about humility and concern for others. So no team can win if everybody just thinks about themselves. And Vince Lombardi was a, uh, he, he led his team, the Green Bay Packers, to win the first two Super Bowls. So here's your homework this week, to notice the greatness in someone and tell them what is great about them, to build someone up and lift them up, or to pray for good things to happen to someone. You know, when someone else does well, it doesn't make you less you feel better when you wish well for others. So Paul wanted to teach the Christians at Philippi how to get along and work together. And he
and he included the example of Christ, who put aside his greatness and was one of us and for us all. Jesus gave his life for the world, and God lifted up. God rewarded him and gave him glory. So Jesus is one who was for all, and he teaches us how to get along, how to work as a team, how to be humble in our walk with God, how to be one for all and get God's reward. Amen. Thank you. 